we had what's called then what many have said was a, a one-man central bank. And the one-man central bank was John Pierpont Morgan, J.P. Morgan, J. Pierpont Morgan, as he's known. Uh, he liked to go by Pierpont. He happened to be uh, attending a convention of the Episcopal Church in Richmond, Virginia, uh, when he received a telegram in October 1907 from his partners in New York saying, Mr. Morgan, we have a, a real problem here. Maybe you should come home. And Morgan lived a pretty good lifestyle, so what, he had his own private railroad car that he traveled in. And what they did is, like on a Saturday night in Richmond, Virginia, uh, hooked Morgan's private railroad car to a locomotive and took him back to New York City, where he arrived on Sunday morning and took charge of the uh, crisis. So Morgan had all these bright young partners, and he sent them out to inspect the books of all the trust companies that were suffering from these runs. And what he wanted to do was find out which of them were sound and which were not sound. And then once he knew which ones were sound, he would organize the resources to relieve them and let the unsound ones fail, and that would presumably bring an end to the crisis. So that was the first step, and, and they couldn't figure out the books of the Knickerbocker Trust Company, so it basically had to shut its doors or fail uh, and right after Morgan got back to New York. Uh, but he kept on working uh, to find out which ones were salvageable and then organized relief from them, uh, mostly not his own money, but money from Chase and National City Bank, wherever he could raise the money. A lot of other things happened, though, too. New York City in, at that time had trouble repaying a loan. It, owned, uh, it had to pay back a loan uh, that from uh, mostly held by European investors, and uh, they didn't have the money to do it. You know, it's an old story in New York City. They borrow too much and can't pay it back. So Morgan organized a bailout of the city uh, so that it could meet its obligations. And then the stock exchange, you know, while this panic is going on, takes a big tumble, and the head of the stock exchange says, we can't handle all this selling pressure. We, we want to shut it down. Morgan says, no, don't shut it down. That'll send a bad message. And so in the first week of the crisis, Morgan arranges an injection of cash so the brokers can stay solvent and the stock exchange can remain open. Uh, then over the weekend, Morgan advises all the rabbis and ministers in New York to make soothing, uh, uh, you know, uh, sermons, uh, and uh, that helps a little bit. Uh, and then they get news that a boatload of gold, you know, is, uh, which was considered the base of the money, was coming from France. So Morgan tells all the newspapers to say, you know, money's on the way. There's no problem here. Uh, so that's like the first week of the crisis, and you know, between October 20th and 27th. Uh, so Morgan has done a bunch of things. Oh, and the Secretary of the Treasury is advised to come up from Washington. Morgan calls up the Secretary of the Treasury and says it would be nice, Secretary Cortelieu was his name, if you got on the train and came to New York and said you were going to put money into the banks in New York. Uh, and so the Secretary of the Treasury does what Morgan asked him to do, comes to New York and th makes a, you know, a public statements that the Treasury is putting money in the banks. Uh, this is Morgan wanted him to do that, and uh, that helps uh, because then the public learns that the government is in there. Uh, and so then at the end of the week, Morgan says, well, you know, it, it might help the, uh, the graphics uh, of, the, of the crisis if, 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 Mr. Secretary, you got on the train and went back to Washington because that might mean that things were okay. So the Secretary of the Treasury gets on the train and goes back to Washington. You can see that J.P. Morgan had quite a bit of clout in those days. <laughs>